everyone, my name is Michelle Trotter and I'm a business development specialist here at Eagle. I have with me here today the CEO and President of Eagle, Dr. Ross Caputo. Thank you for being here, Ross. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Michelle. So we have a couple of topics that we'd like to discuss with you today. Um, the first one is antibody testing and then the second is the reopening of the states. So first let's dive into antibody testing. I know it has become very popular during the coronavirus pandemic. Um, so can you first describe what are antibody tests and why are they important? Your body has immunity when it has resistance to a particular disease. Now the way we usually measure this or indicate it is by the presence of antibodies. Now antibodies are special protein molecules that the body produces in response to an antigen like the virus or a bacteria. Now there are different type of antigens, but we're gonna focus on COVID-19, we're gonna focus on bacterial infections because today that's what's important. You asked why we're doing antibody tests. We want to know if we have some protection to it on our own so that we don't get sick. Um, so when you get an antibody test, there are two different, two different types of antibodies that you're being looked at. Can you kind of talk about the two different ones and the differences? Absolutely. I think there's some confusion that an antibody is an antibody. There's actually five different antibodies. But we're going to focus on two. We're going to focus on two because the antibody tests that we're seeing today for COVID actually measure IgM and IgG. And IgM is that first large molecule antibody that lets you know that my body's trying to work, my body's trying to attack it, and it attacks it first and foremost. But later on, what happens? You start producing IgG, a smaller protein molecule, that's going to give you, it's going to give you the immunity later on. We're going to hope for this herd immunity we've heard so much about, we're also going to hear from the immunizations. If we get vaccines, we're going to get some sort of immunity. We're going to be looking to produce some IgG molecules, among other things in the body, to do that. So there are two type, and that's the ones that we want to look at, we want to know. Now, we have this graph that I want to show you that talks about classic antibody tests that are being used today to, in fact, see where we are. It shows you that you first have the infection and measured by either RNA or the virus itself. And it shows you that it's there in the beginning, day zero is what this graph is talking about. And after a period of time, five or six days, it starts going down. Almost at the same time, you see the IgM molecule going up as it begins to fight it. After a little bit of lag, you see the IgG molecule, that second one, go longer. So what happens? IgM has a short lifespan. It's there, it's the first line of attack, it's the first wave of armed forces going after it, and then IgG stays thereafter. So you'll see that in a 60-day time period, according to this diagram that came from a particular test, it indicates to you that the body works in tandem with itself. It gets an attack from an invader, an outside invader, that has the first wave, then the second wave, and that second wave is supposed to give you immunity for an extended period of time. No, we don't know how long. We don't know when vaccines are going to be ready, but this is the premise. So can you use the antibody test as a COVID test? Let me try to clarify this question. Serology tests detect the presence in the blood as it's trying to respond to something that's be specific, COVID-19 we're looking for antibodies. So the test is measuring, is your body reacting to it? Is your body trying to defend itself? Is it getting the job done by trying to keep you safe? It does not detect at all the virus. It detects the body's response to the virus. So in the early days of an infection, you don't have antibodies. This would not pick up COVID-19 in your body. It wouldn't do it because there's no IgM, as we said earlier. So what this is doing, it's going to tell you that after X days, and I'll go back to that graph, after a few days, you'll start getting IgM, and early on, you will be able to say, hey, my body's reacting, it's working, I'm trying to get better. These tests are critical for the public health community and doctors to get an idea of what is going on today. That today could be I have them, I don't have them, or I'm sick and I'm starting to fight it. What kind of help do I give it? But it is not, absolutely not, a COVID-19 virus test. It's not. It's a body response test. 
So what does it mean to have a positive result, and then what does it mean to have a negative result? If you have a positive result, does that mean you're already immune, immune to the virus? When you have a positive result, it's good news. It's great news. I hope I'm positive because that says that my body has already seen the antigen, has now at this point in time produced antibodies towards it, and since I'm not sick, I have no symptoms whatsoever, I have immunity. That herd immunity that we're talking about, I have some immunity to it. What does negative mean? Negative means I've done a great job of sheltering in place, staying away from everyone, wearing my mask, cleaning and disinfecting, and I have not been insulted by the virus or the antigen from it. So there's no, there's no bad result, no bad result whatsoever to an antibody test. Yay, I've got antibodies, or B, I'm doing a great job of being safe. So I know in the recent weeks, some articles have come out saying that antibody tests aren't reliable or showing false positive results. What's your intake on that? Well, the answer is yes. And what does that mean? There are a lot of tests out there. There are a lot of choices to make, and many of these tests have been rushed to be used to help what's going on in this pandemic. In fact, an article that was entitled, Why is the Accuracy of the Antibody Test Varying So Much? Well, first of all, you need to know a couple things. There are two basic kinds of tests. Rapid tests, which get you an answer very quickly, and another test, which is called an ELISA test, which is a lab test, where they draw blood, go back to the lab, test it, and give you the results. What does that mean? You already have to understand that a rapid test, a yes-no, means that there's a threshold that you have to hit before it's a yes. So that means anywhere beneath it, getting up to it, it won't trigger a yes. So it'll be a no when you actually have some sort of protection, maybe. Some sort of production, maybe. A, a, an ELISA test, the blood test, gives you actual quantitative numbers of how much IgM and how much IgG that you have. I, as a researcher, would want to know how much of each because that tells me where I am on my curve. That curve was a very important thing to understand how this process works. When you get more IgG than IgM, you're on the downside of infection getting better and you're working on immunity. When your IgM is going up, you're still, you could still be in a phase of infection. Could be. Don't know the facts of that. Now there's question about sensitivity, reliability, and it's measured in a couple ways. How often will I get a false positive? How often will I get a false negative? Test data is out today, and articles are out there, and I'm going to choose not to say who we think is best, though if you ask me what we've done, I'd probably tell you offline. There are, there's a test out there that is a 100% number for testing positive, you have it. And testing negative, you're, you're at approximately, sorry, you're at approximately 99 plus percent that you really are negative. Now that is an ELISA test. That is absolutely not a rapid test. The best rapid tests that I have seen are in 80% levels. Okay, you can get false negatives quite easy for the reason I told you before of you're only measuring a threshold value. And if you don't get it, you get a negative, even though you may be well along the path of getting some immunity. And so that, I think that's very important and at the, at the end of the day, research takes time. Research and development takes time. You can throw all the money you want at it. You can blame anybody you want for it. The fact is, things take time. So we actually did a antibody test. We took antibody test here at Eagle the other day. Can you explain why we did it and what we did? Yes. Obviously, that was my idea. And the whole point was, and we did an ELISA test. I wanted to know out of 50 some employees that we had on site, how many of them had already seen the virus, been asymptomatic, and had started producing antibodies. I wanted to do that. And next week or so we'll present the data that we have and we'll go from there. I also believe it was a good thing for our employees and for people to know, I wanna know if I have antibodies or not, 
And if I don't, back to my original statements before. I've done a good job of sheltering in place. I've done a good job on everything else. And at the end of the day, I want to know if I have any sort of immunity. So we did a test. We at Eagle have been working the entire time period. As you know, we have been open seven days a week, double shifts to maintain control for those people who need our tests, who need our results to make sure that they can treat patients for patient safety. So we've been out and about, haven't we? We've gotten gas for the car, we've eaten food, we've done things, we've gone out and about. We have not actually stayed at home. Eagle is a very, very clean place. It is very, the best place to be actually. But you have to go outside, you have to leave your house. So we wanted to see where it was and what was going on. And we'll report on that later. So the next topic that I'd like to talk to you about is the reopening of the states. Um, a lot of malls, restaurants, and also nail salons have been opening and it feels like a lot of people have forgotten about the coronavirus and also about social distancing. Can you kind of just say your opinion and take on that? I think it's very important that we get back to normal or the new normal, whatever that's going to be, as quickly as possible. The emotional toll sometimes is even worse than the physical toll. You can't get a vaccine for losing your job. You can't get a vaccine for not being able to see your children, for being able to see your families. You, you can't get a vaccine for that. But we have to be wise, we have to be smart. We can't jump in the deep end if we don't know how to swim. And I think most everyone is, is attempting to accomplish that. There's a couple issues that sort of make me pause. No one likes to wear a mask. This is not real. I don't like it. It fogs my glasses. It doesn't make it work. But I wear a mask as much for you as I do for me. Wearing a mask is simply showing manners for others. It's telling somebody that I care about your well-being and I don't even know you. There are some people who can't wear masks. Asthmatics, people have a hard time breathing. They can't wear it. I'll wear it for them. I will have the mask. I will try to be as safe for them as I can be. I will social distance. I will do everything I possibly can as I try to get back to my life because that's what we all need to do. But we can't just run out there and do it willy-nilly. And that's an old one. So this is great information, Dr. Caputo. Um, we appreciate you being here. If you have any questions for Dr. Caputo, you can fill out our fact check form on our website.